Welcome to Shots and Stitches from the Lucky Needle. On this episode of Shots and Stitches, John and Tony are back in the shop with the Coke and Barber chair. Tag along as they begin cleaning and polishing the chair, planning the upholstery design, and begin making the patterns for the barber chair's backrest and seat. Check out a few tools, tips, and tricks in Tony's garage and share in some shots along the way. We hope you enjoy this episode. Cheers! Hey, what's up guys? John from The Lucky Needle. It is Friday, October 21st. Tony and I are back at his place. We're gonna start doing some more work on that barber chair. But first we gotta go take our inaugural shot of the episode and then we're gonna get started working on this chair. I think we're gonna try and get some patterns done today. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So follow us along, let's go. Hello. <laughs> Shots? Shots, let's do it. Shots, then some stitches? Yep. All right. Redmont? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have the Redmont. Oh, oh, no. I'm making a mess. No. That one's for John. <laughs> Cheers. Good to see you. Yeah, good, good to see you. Yeah. All right, should we All right. go? Let's go take a look. Try and remember where we left off. Yeah, it's been a hot <laughs> minute. Okay. Look at this, I cleaned up in here. Holy shit, yeah, you did. A little bit, a little bit. So I got rid of, uh, I put the trans alp in the back so that we had the, the motorcycle lift as a, as a workstation. Nice. So what do we want to try and do? Clean this fuck yeah, out of clean, this. Yeah, clean this. I mean, look at this. You know, this, this is, is probably hair, hair from yeah. 1952 or something no, like that. Thank We should probably talk about what we're gonna do on the on the cushion. I mean, we kind of we kind of talked about it, right? Because that's well, clean, I think that's the clean I like work. the idea of matching these diamonds, like we had talked about. Yeah. See, yes. Holy shit! We Remember, because we were talking about the Harlequin diamonds, yeah, and that's yeah, what yeah. I was trying to. Yeah, yeah. And little, it, it just dawned on me as you said that that it's actually on the foot. Yes, absolutely. That yeah. right there. We on should the, like on try that. and match close to the same size, onto the. You know what you I mean? You want to do it that small? Yeah. Really? Why not? Have you seen the way I sew? You sure about that? This, oh, we're here to learn, Tony. This There's was our it. drawing from the last time. Yeah. We were going to do a center strip. I think we should. We should do the center strip like this. Oh, that would be cool. This size, you know what That would be cool. But only on the deck, right? Not on the face. Only on the, top on of the, the, on the, on the deck, right? Surfaces, yeah. And then we were going to do a really cool top stitch rather than any kind of welting. Mm -hmm. Oh, here? Yeah, on any of the cushions. Yeah, yeah. You know, like where they have welting now, mm -hmm. we'll just do a cool top stitch. Yeah. I think that'd be sweet. It might be cool to put welting here. You think so? Might be. Because it just looks so Like clean. a little green. The green yeah. welting that we're going to do? That's our little, like right little there. ham-ho drawing. Um, that'd be cool. Right here, man. Um, so this is that foot rest. Okay. So back cushion, bottom cushion, foot rest. Do you want to do that? Yeah. That's but that's nice. that's wider than. No, it's not. No, that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So just do a top stitch right here mm -hmm. with the side panel. Mm hmm. I mean, we could. Yeah, we'll measure it, and and then these will just be solid color, John. Although I thought we we're gonna do white on the top, green on the side. That would be cool. The only the only question mm -hmm. is, see how sharp these corners are right here? Mm -hmm. Like, if we top stitch this right here, how 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 clean could we make those corners look without the fabric bunching up under there? You 
you know, in those corners, because, I mean, you know, this will look mm -hmm. great, but that, but even this is going to telegraph because the seam allowance will show, unless we tuck the seam allowance under here and do a little padding I think on we top. can make it work. I mean, the worst thing we do is try and fuck up and then. Yeah. I think that, that this top piece, it should be all, like, this will be the seam, right? Like here and then down to here. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we'll do a top stitch along there and then it'll be a little tricky here but it should be okay because we don't have a shit ton of fabric here right so it right. should be easy to maneuver okay because that's what i was worried about you know like how in the hell would you make that look real clean because there's gonna be a lot of fabric on that on that on that toe of that right you there. wanted to do a, a french seam or like a i don't know just what, one what do you think I think French seems too too much. I think if we just do like a right here, you know, mm -hmm. or it doesn't side. even need a top stitch. We can just sew it up with the green on the sides and the white on the top, and just have and a install it and call it good. You know, they're small. We could try a couple different things and mm -hmm. see what it works. Yeah, some more hair. Oh fuck. Just took my gloves off. <laughs> so this right here, we're going to make this a little bigger. We'll take a take some dimensions, and I do have the foam. Bought yeah, this foam a long time ago. Out, and then, uh, and then this we were going to try to let's see. We we're going to try to save the foam on the backrest because if, if this yeah, is I the latex so. rubberized stuff, and how much of this do we need to save as the pattern? We just need that. Let me take a picture so we know. No, it's uh, rubberized foam. Look at that. It's actually in pretty decent shape. We just have to remember we have to put the zipper so we can bolt the... Yeah, the right. One. This we could probably still use for a pattern, but like we'll want to... We'll just use it. We'll I mean, save it this. for reference. It's pretty, it's pretty elaborate, man. More hard. Coming from my, my uh, home furniture background probably not for our car guy but the you know the they got a lot of zippers on yeah there's a lot of stuff going on there look at the woodwork and stuff yeah it's pretty cool the way they did that i'm surprised they did it all zippers i would have stapled this you'd think huh it's all wood i bet here. you i bet you when somebody redid it they didn't go back with all the zippers well, if and I stuff. Redid it, I'll staple it. yeah <laughs> They must have did it this way because at the time they must have had replacement covers. Yeah. Available. Yeah. You know. I bet you. What do you want to do? I mean, we don't need to. We don't need to zipper it. We could staple it. This, I mean, this does is not, need to be zippered here, though. I think. Yeah. I mean, this is not going to the Smithsonian or anything. You know, no. it's just something. You know, we can do it however we want. Because this, none of this gets seen. That's all, even in a reclined position, yeah. it still tucks down behind that one cushion. <clears throat> Sides, on the other hand. Oh, this is totally reusable. Yeah, that foam is. Yeah. You have a steamer, right? Or no? No. Oh, shit. I'll bring mine over next time. i, I got to start looking on, on Marketplace for one of those jiffies. That's what I have. You have a jiffy? Yeah, I found it on Marketplace yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, like homeless, 50 bucks. Some homeless guy found it in a dumpster behind Sears and he put it up on Craigslist for like 50 bucks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah those are the best. Well, we take it dinner. Okay. Damn, look how nice this, like. Oh, I know. I mean, this is hard maple right here. Yeah. Which is probably the only reason that this cracked. Let me go grab some wood glue. Woodworking tip for the day. So this is just regular wood, you know, wood glue that you buy at any place, really. Mm. Um, it, it's amazing stuff. So you just you just put it on there, get a nice coating on it. So nice, you know, relatively even coat. It doesn't have to be perfect because you kind of want it to move around a little bit. So then you put it on there. Kind of squirt or you know move it around a little bit and what you want is just a little bit of squirt out like that i mean because you don't want to suppress all the glue out so you know for something like this blue tape is your friend it's it's an awesome clamp get it like that get a nice you 
can, you can see the, the glue out right there, the press out, so you know it has to go in and down, so just press it in and down and put the glue tape on there. Because it gets absorbed into the grains of the wood. And believe it or not, when this dries, that joint will be stronger than the wood. Really? If you if you try to re-break that right there, it will break on a different part of the wood, not mm -hmm. on that glue joint. That's how strong that glue is. I mean, you can get the majority of it off if you want, but yeah. you know this part's not getting seen. Normally, if it was, you know, a project that yeah. you were going to stain, you know, which you'd have to watch out for, especially if you use outdoor. If you use the outdoor stuff and you plan on staining it afterwards, you have to get all the wood glue off before it dries because. Um, oh, yeah. because then the what happens is when you try to stain it it doesn't it doesn't soak into color, the wood yeah. because it creates a basically a seal and uh, then it just floats around on top so it gives you halos um, so it's important to get that off but this is not being seen because it gets covered with the thing so it's not important well we're we're gonna show how to do it on this but anybody that gets this far in gets the secret tips you know? right so but yeah if you want it all straightforward direct uh i teach how to make patterns on anything fully custom from scratch without the old covers or anything so make sure you check that out it's the seats course on the lucky needle.com so we're going to do our intermission shop shot yeah and then we're going to go start laying out patterns for how we do that yeah you want to cut that foam Rainfall. For the bottom uh, cushion, Rainfall. yeah, because we got to do that, or else because you, John, John yeah. mentioned something while we were eating about how, how he does the, uh, the patterns, and it's brilliant where you actually mark it on the foam, right, mm -hmm. and then you put the clear over it. Smart, very smart. We won't do that for the box cushion, but for the backrest we will. Okay. The box cushion is going to be calculated because it's a square. We're going to make it match the backrest. Right. Backrest isn't a perfect square. We'll have to figure out if it's tapered. Is it tapered? Or I think it's square? a little bit tapered. Yeah, I think so yeah. too, yeah. Now look, if you guys haven't tried this stuff yet, <laughs> if you can if you can find it, I don't know if we're allowed to transport it over state lines for people in Minnesota, but probably not. Um, if you can find it, Redmont, seriously, it's like a liqueur. When it's cold like that, it oh, really yeah. is. Look at that steady hand. Come on now. Much better than me pouring that WD-40 out there. <laughs> <laughs> we still didn't decide on what one. That's a wood top. Come on, that's class right there. On where the purple power or WD-40. Oh, yeah. I'm willing to concede a draw. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Casey, I love these. These are so awesome. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Cheers. We need to make sure this thing works properly before yeah. we completely assemble well, it. Well, from what I read on uh, on on Casey's research, mm. um, it's either going to work or it's not because there's no seals. Well, I have it's those a, two schematics now, too. Yeah, and Definitely it's a completely, helps. the inside, the way it pumps, mm -hmm. is completely sealless. Remember how the lean back and all that shit was yeah. acting up? Okay, so that's that, all in the... I figured that out. Remember that whole spring thing yeah, where yeah, you pull yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah. It's all a clutch mechanism, because if you look under here, it's a clutch oh. mechanism. See? The three plates right here? So it right just here? wasn't... So it wasn't, yeah, point. we it wasn't adjusted correctly. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, or it was it was rusty... And it wasn't, we need to, it, you know, we need to clean it up or, or just at least lubricate it. Yeah, yeah. You know, because all it is, look, it's a, it's a compressed spring. Because here's the springs, the clutch springs. And then what it do, does is it releases the pressure. You see the, the clamps right there? It opens that up, allows those to slide back. And then when you, when you turn the handle back, um, it, locks it, back it, it locks it back in place. It's very simple. It just needs to be cleaned up. That's really all there is to it. Sweet. And then, and then that right there is is nothing, John, but an up and down. Okay. Well, now, maybe that's why that's why it wasn't working because the that remember how gunked up that bearing yeah, was and it exactly. didn't want to turn and all that. Shit? Once all that stuff is greased up, now the only thing the the wild card there is going to be I don't know if there's a pivot lock. 
right? For turning the chair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, so we'll figure that part when we get it back together. Yeah. Because we're definitely going to have to refer to episode two. <laughs> to, to, to reverse engineer yeah. putting this thing back together again. Right. So I think what we were going to do, John, is figure out our cushion situation, right? Yeah. I think the first thing we need to tackle is that the main focal piece is going to be the backrest, right? So this needs to be what we... Everything else goes off of this. Right. So we need to get our patterns off of this and draw out how we want it. And okay. then from there, because this is going to be just a dimensional piece... We don't need to take patterns off of this. We'll just measure it. Okay. You know, because it's all a perfect square. Well, so is it tapered though? This? I don't know. It's, I don't think so. Here, let's see. I mean, th that's not tapered. The actual. Let's see. It's about the same. Yeah, it's about the same. Okay. Well, that makes it easier. If it was tapered, it'd be harder. So, good. And I lost so we'll my. we'll start beer. out by marking out the first scene here we'll mark out all the all the all the like important seams and number them and then we'll okay. we'll add in like the so the reason I'm not marking the seam like right here where the old one is mm -hmm. is because when you lay the template material over here we're gonna get this basic shape right and then when the covers installed it's going to pull it more tight right. down like that. okay you know because we're going to put foam on the back of all the fabric right so like if we were just going to do only oh, fabric yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. we're going to do only fabric like this right you'd need to like when you cut out your pieces you'd or trace out your pieces you'd need to take off like a quarter of an inch to allow it to you know hold up tight but what i like about doing like this method is because i on my face i usually do half inch mm -hmm. and on the sides i usually do quarter inch and it really fills out the cover makes everything fit nice and tight okay so that's usually what i do most furniture guys don't do car upholstery and most car guys don't do furniture upholstery because they're pretty it's it's a very different thing you know car car stuff is very it's it's way more precise than furniture because it's it's a lot less sewing, you know. It's more stapling, so you can really you get away with murder being able to like you know stretch your fabrics and and tension your fabrics. Where you know when when you're sewing a full cover like we're gonna do here, I mean it has to be it has to be dead on really for it to to not have wrinkles and all kinds of stuff. That's where that Dacron comes in handy too, because it fills out all the all the wrinkles. Um, well, I can tell you why I don't do furniture upholstery. It has nothing to do with how difficult or hard it is. There's no money in it. <laughs> yeah. They're really good. I mean, you can go buy an Ikea couch for True. 300 more than I can, less than I can buy the materials for. And this car upholstery is typically a solid color. Yeah. Whereas furniture, there's all kinds of different patterns and repeats and stripes and all that business. And, and that is yeah. a real pain in the butt. Oh, well, they're having a good old time. Joe's playing. Really? Joe yeah. was no just way. chasing her. Otherwise, I wouldn't have believed you. <laughs> so, John, is that where that uh, that that's uh, where the yeah the zipper's gonna start? The zipper starts. Okay. Yeah. Oh, this is so smart with that with that clear. Yeah, I watch you. When you see it in action, you're gonna be like, "Why haven't I done this forever?" So we're well, gonna have to figure out this zipper portion on this I think when it's its own piece okay but we'll cut it out because it, it is all one piece on this probably have to calculate so what I want to do is measure this and get it to an even measurement mm -hmm. like the closest even measurement we could go center you know we could because mark centers it, because you're not gonna be able to tell the difference between here and the bottom of the or the legs right you know right so like it, it's important to just get it close but we want to make it easy on us to calculate everything if that makes sense mm -hmm. so like 12 and a half that should be okay that should so be is that right. with the seam allowance or or without this is going to be finished with finished okay finished with, with. so yeah. 13 and a half half inch seam allowance no 12 12 and a half finished i always do half inch for seam allowance both sides yeah okay yeah 
or a quarter inch. But let's see what the the, like, the footrest is. How wide it is. Can we do twelve, 12 and, and a half. half. I don't think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you normally mark center and then and then mark center here? That's or? what I would I would do. Okay. Because with a lot of upholstery things, nothing's ever perfectly square, right? right? So if you measure off of all one side, you know, I like to do like measure of what this is. So that's 19 and 1 8. All right, see, so how it is tapered here? It's mm -hmm. 19 up here at the top. So nine and a half, right? Yeah. So this will be our center line. It doesn't look right. 19 and a half. Okay. So that's uh, nine and three quarter. quarters. 19 and 1 eighth. So I'm going to do that trick again? Yeah. That's 19 and a half. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That's pretty straight. Yeah. Looks good for my house. All right. Should have did this math before the vodka. No, that's okay. The best of course we get done. <laughs> Three sheets of the wind. It's a feeling thing. So this will be our diamond deal. Right, right, right. This, I think we need to sew this whole thing first. Mm -hmm. And then we'll sew the, sew the face. Why put the face in? Put the face and then yeah. we'll sew the back on. Okay. Was there something? It sure looks like it, doesn't it? Remember there I was I don't think the, it was. It was uh, just that one thing. No. This it, is just must be it, hair juice. That's hair juice, isn't it? Oh. That's the grease you were talking about. <laughs> we gotta cut this cushion out, right? So we should cut this out to the size that we want. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're not gonna do patterns like we did on this because this is a this is a square right regular cushion. We're gonna match it, right? So we're gonna do our cushion to I mean we could nineteen like the the cover will be nineteen and a half. Okay. Finished. Right? Oh, okay. I got you. You know what I mean? But so it that it'll match this. You don't think it'll 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 compress that foam to make it the same size as this, though? And then we're in the same boat as we were well, before. I don't know. What is this? You yeah. sure you don't want to cut that foam first? Well, let's see what the the uh, the difference. Let's see what the the base is. Okay. All right. So maybe the ba maybe the bottom is just bigger. But what we need to make sure is that these lines meet up. Right, right, right. So that center panel that we so, sew in here is the same size. Yes. I mean, we that's could, the most important part. Well, couldn't we theoretically? Couldn't we? Couldn't we cut this in a longer panel and then cut it? Or do you have to have the stops for the for the seams? You need to have the seam allowance. But like, if you want, we can just make a big panel of diamonds and then cut it. I mean, wouldn't that be? Wouldn't that be? I mean, then we're guaranteed because we can kind of. We can kind of manipulate it so that it's in yeah. the right spot, right? It depends right? on how perfect you want it to be. Like on something like this, I just want the diamonds on the end to end on the seam. Yes. If they don't perfectly meet up from here to, to there, there, especially because this thing's going to do this and back yeah, and but, forth, it's okay, right? But, okay, so but think about it this way, though, John. Um, the only time you'll ever see this thing like in its yeah. full glory is when it's when it's like this because when it's reclined yeah there'll be somebody in it yeah but you know what i mean so it would be cool if if it was a real clean transition from this to here so when i do this on car seats usually i i put them back together right like okay backrest and everything and i have it like and i draw my seams out like that right right so then i know where to start. I got you. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. Let's cut the the cushion. Okay. We'll show people how the your your barnyard find foam cutter. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. We want it like 
snug in there or a little bit of gap, air gap? Because it's like 21 and, and 5 eighths. It's up to you. I mean 20 and 5 eighths. Well, we'll sorry, down the floor. Let me get that out of there. Super. Yeah, so. So you want is, nice and taut. Yeah. I'm thinking it needs to be, I'm thinking it needs to be like probably a half inch or three quarter bigger than this one. Depth wise. Easily. I think we should cut it. Because it doesn't matter if this moves back and forth, right? The, no. Yeah, no. that's what we figured out, right? Right. I think we should cut it exactly, the foam, we should cut exactly to this size. So, let's see, if this... You can just trace the piece of the wood that came out of there, rather than trying to measure it. You're so smart! She is smart. What the hell? That's a good idea. Good idea. Casey, thank you, babe. You're welcome. I had to watch the video like a lot of times, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the perfect fit. Oh, fuck, we can use that as a pattern. Yeah. It's the only time I condone using Sharpies is on foam. Otherwise, they should never be used in upholstery. Otherwise, we have the John Sanction space pencils. Oh, yeah, here we go. Right? Albright Supply space pencils. Yeah, these things are awesome. Yeah. 30 years ago, yeah, 30 years ago, I, this upholstery shop was going out of business and I just bought everything they had, and this was part of the deal. Now, this thing is amazing. But the problem with it is, they know you're only going to buy it once. Mm -hmm. So it's so, expensive. So it's very, very expensive. So um, it's basically a grinder, right? This this part right here is a grinder. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's a grinder. It's the same motor yeah, of yeah. any other power yeah. tool you use. And a grinder, a Bosch grinder is what, 75 bucks, 80 bucks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this thing, well, back then was 400 and... Now it's like 550, 600. Okay, so it was 400 something dollars back yeah. then. So, but it came in the whole package deal. So these things are really cool because they allow you to get kind of a square cut because it has a base. But yeah. for years, I used a steak knife. That's what I still use. Yeah, and the turkey and, knife. Yeah, yeah, turkey knife. Yeah, and you can get those at pretty much any any self-respecting uh, secondhand anywhere, store. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. they'll they'll have uh, they'll have the steak knives because when you're cutting foam, what you need is two blades fight. You know, basically cutting against. Because if you look at this, there's actually two blades in there. One goes up, one goes down. And that's basically just like a steak knife. It's two blades, one goes up, one goes down. And that's how that works. You know, you just got to be a little a little better about, um, you know, keeping it square. Yeah. And even that's really not that critical. So... Yeah, it does a cleaner job than, than the steak knife for Big sure, time. but I mean, you, it's a, at a premium, right? Yeah. Oh, I think this will work perfect, huh? This also came in that lot of stuff I bought from that poster. I have no idea what this does. I've been carrying it around for 30 years, but do you have any idea what this does? It's some sort of stretcher of some sort. Nope. No idea. Do you guys know what this is? Million dollar question. Free lucky needle hat if you get it correct. <laughs> <laughs> Deal. Deal. Uh, <laughs> all right, so the other thing... <clears throat> I like to do too is give ourselves alignment marks on your patterns. So we're just gonna one of that's the seam right there. Mm -hmm. yourself. Just so as you're sewing it together, right? You can make sure. Do you uh, do you, you transfer those this? or do you do you 
do you cut the bullets in your seam allowance? I cut the bullets in the seam allowance. Okay. I'm glad we didn't assume that that uh, was just a flat board. <laughs> right? Well, that's the thing. Like, even on cars, nothing's ever really that straight. So you always got to kind of, like, eyeball it mm -hmm. to, like, make it look straight. Yeah. Because, like, if you go off one line that is dead straight, maybe the seat's not sitting. Like, something else is that it's eye level with is not right. sitting straight and then it looks really weird and offset so you got to kind of like fudge it to make the point of relativity yeah exactly yeah do you have to do that with cabinets absolutely all right well uh you want to start making the patterns yeah. for this we we'll yeah. go i brought I, it's in the car i'll go we can go get it right now okay the uh the, the vinyl that we use so we'll go get that and then uh maybe we'll start making some patterns making some patterns yeah Cool. All right, Tony, so I just went and got this out of the car. This is my secret, not secret. Well, a lot of people know how to do it, but this is what I use to make patterns. That's right? A, now, where do you get this stuff at? Uh, most fabric stores, you can get it at Joann's or Walmart pretty cheap. Really? You really just want to get like the thinnest, right? fine, clear vinyl you can get. Okay. You know? Right. Uh, That's brilliant. Yeah, so basically what I like to do is I have this uh, just cheap spray can foam. Also from Albright Supplies. You can get this from Albright Supplies. I think this is 7 gauge or 12 gauge or something. I can't mm -hmm. remember. It's, a couple, it's like 5 bucks a yard or something. Uh, so then, what you can do is you can take your no, it, your spray Ron, foam. Is that is that a is that contact he, adhesive? Do you have to spray both surfaces or just one on this? For what we're doing, I I don't. This is like the cheapest crap you can buy. Okay. Right? Yes, you're supposed to spray both surfaces, but for what I use it for, you just want it to hold temporarily. Okay. So I spray it on one surface, and that's it. Gotcha. So, what we're gonna do is show you how to make these patterns, but we're gonna show you in the next episode. <laughs> so make sure you tune in. <laughs> or, nice one, John. or you can watch it in the seats course. But anyways, we're gonna show you next episode. We're gonna start sewing this up. We're gonna do the diamond patterns. We're gonna do everything. I'm gonna show you how to make the patterns. So make sure you stay tuned. Uh, any words, Tony? No, no? I, I pretty much covers it. <laughs> All right. Well, it's a good time. Uh, off camera, Tony and I are going to do a lot of polishing and, and, and churching Some up painting. the other stuff that's yeah. a little yeah. more boring. So don't worry. You won't have to suffer through that. We'll get to the good tips we'll next show you, We'll show you what paint we use if, yeah. we, if there's anything yeah, special yeah, yeah. or anything like that, you know. Um, and, yeah, trial and error. We'll get it. Cool. Yeah. Oh, and don't forget to submit questions for Ask John and Tony. Yes. We're going to start implementing that. And uh, please. The poultry shop, yeah. whatever. You know, Anything. If we if we can't answer, we'll be honest and tell you we can't. If you see some random shit in the background you want to ask questions about, yeah. ask it. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, <laughs> about... for sure there's a story. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, good times, Tony. All right, John. Perfect. All right, guys. We'll see you next one. Make sure you subscribe. Watch the next episode.